In the year 2020, humans sent cockroaches along with moss to Mars as part of an experiment to inhabit the planet. But after 600 years, the cockroaches evolved into a terrifying creature called Terraform Mars and a disease called the Alien Engine Virus, which originated on Mars and has a 100% fatality rate in humans currently plaguing Earth. In order to cut off this nightmare, a crew whose human body was strengthened by special surgery was sent out to Mars. Before they were able to land on Mars, they were invaded by many terraformers, so they split up to ride on escape vessels. The warriors fight hard while fighting against various pastes, including the protagonists, Akari Hizamaru and Michelle K. Davis. Captain Kamachi contacted the companions to see if they were in good condition, so Division 2 and Division 1 reported that they were safe, but they were also surrounded by terraformers. The Division 1 vehicles were entered by Terraform Mars, and they were able to defend themselves by using guns. Meanwhile, Michelle reports to Captain Kamachi that Akari and herself have both taken their medicine because they need it. The two don't want to let the cockroaches get in their way, but even though Akari is within his limitations, he still continues to fight. Michelle notices that Akari is getting weak when suddenly a cockroach flies up to her and grabs her up, and while in the air, he is punched by cockroaches. Meanwhile, in Division 2, they used a wall shield, but Yako was left outside alone with the cockroaches. Akari is still being carried by the terraformers until dawn and suddenly he is getting pushed down to the ground by these things very quickly. But Alex uses his baseball skills to save him, so Akari's impact on the ground has been reduced, but Akari's mutant drug runs out. In Division 2, Alex saved Yeko from the terraformers, but he was very weak afterwards, and another woman was cornered by terraformers in Division 1. It's good that Captain Kamachi returned to their spaceship and saved them. Meanwhile, Michelle rushes to Akari's location because she knows his medicine is running out. Akari woke up from his fall and saw that there was a cockroach waiting for him. Akari remembers the boy struggling with the alien virus and his childhood friend who died with the virus. He used his mutant powers without the drug. It was only necessary for him to stabilize his mental state. All of his companions were surprised to see the bright light. Akari's look changed as he charged forward toward the hybrid cockroach, trying to fight one-on-one. -on -one. Akari's companions have arrived to support him as he continues to hit the hard body of the hybrid cockroach, even though it wasn't really hurt, so he just kicked its head. But after that, Akari fell down, and Michelle came to hold him. Once they beat the rest of the enemies, Akari is put to rest while the others regroup. Captain Kamachi and Michelle were planning to go to their main ship to meet other divisions. They said they would reach it in a week because their escape vessels couldn't fly anymore. Michelle tells Captain Kamachi that Adolf's division is probably annihilated. They continue journeying to go to their main ship to meet other divisions. As they travel, Captain Kamachi wonders why there have been no terraformers attacking them in the past six days. Michelle suddenly kicks Kamachi because he wants to train them, while Akari trains himself alone. Meanwhile, on Earth, there is also tension between the executives of their own countries, because, until now, the executive of Division 1 has not been able to send a rescue ship. According to the Division 4 executive, the Division 1 executive intends not to send a rescue, because it wants to test the true power of mosaic organ surgery. Because of this, Division 4 executives decided that they would be the only ones in charge of the rescue mission, and have already sent a rescue ship armed with tactical weapons. However, despite everyone's knowledge, what they sent was a battleship for Division 4, and not the rescue ship because they had a different plan. Back on Mars, Division 3 is still inside the pyramid, and they saw here the information about all the crew and spaceships that they used in the mission, which surprised everyone. Michelle and Captain Kamachi were suspicious of the burnt bodies of the entire Division 4, because terraformers are interested in the bodies of human hybrids and do not leave the burnt bodies on the ground. Captain Kamachi does not want to believe it, but there was a traitor division. Meanwhile, Division 4 is still alive, and they are in the main spaceship, and they have already placed mine bombs around it to blow up any division that goes there. They were surrounded by many terraformers, so they were forced to use the anti-terraformer cannon, which will only target things that move due to the motion sensor, so they are not allowed to move when it is activated. Captain Kamachi has spotted Annex 1, but they are forced to stop because they saw a radio tower there. And through Jared's powerful echolocation, there are people in front of Annex 1, and they also learned that there are mines around the spaceship. Captain Kamachi immediately ordered Erika to call the Earth. 
And when Liu San finds out that Captain Kamachi is already there, they activate the radio tower to block communication from Earth. Because of this, Liu San called Kamachi's group and revealed they were the ones who brought the six terraformers on board before they even arrived on Mars. Liu San also warns them that if they don't surrender Akari and Michelle, they will blow up their ship with a powerful missile. Liu San wants the two of them to become guinea pigs because of their unique abilities. The two are on their way, but Captain Kamachi stopped them because if they leave the vehicle, Liu San will definitely blow them up. Just then, some terraformers arrived that had slingshots, so Leo activated the shield of the spaceship against their rocks. According to Liu San, there is no chance that they will be hit by any weapon because of the very high technology of their equipment. However, with the help of Keiji's clear eyes, Alex suddenly destroyed their apparatus, so the shield was gone for a moment. Then Kanoko used lightning speed to bring Captain Kamachi there before the shield came back. The enemies were surprised to suddenly see Captain Kamachi, and they told them that their traitorous act had exposed the rest of the crew to mortal danger. The Chinese division had begun attacking Captain Kamachi, and Jet punched him with his power like an impulse, sending him flying. Alex threw the ball again, but it was absorbed by the opponent's machine, and this is when Captain Kamachi rushed at them and punched them one by one until he was close to Captain Liu San. Then they go face to face with each other. Using the power of the giant hornet, Captain Kamachi managed to put a huge spike on Liu's body and face. Captain Liu San didn't expect it, he just thought that Captain Kamachi was an amateur. The SO's message was received by Division 3 under the leadership of Captain Asimov, and because of their plan to further strengthen their alliance with other countries, they will go to the one who sent the message that they are Captain Kamachi, and there is another mission that Asimov will ask Alexander to do. Meanwhile, Captain Kamachi tells everyone that he has injected a painful venom into Liu San's body. Kamachi was surprised to learn that Liu San was still in good condition, and Liu San ordered his companions to shoot Kamachi's legs. Then, he uses the mutant drug inside his body to transform into the blue-ringed octopus, which can heal itself rapidly. As a venom, just a single octopus can kill seven humans, but can also be used as a painkiller. He tells his crew that he wants Captain Kamachi's wound tended to, and they will keep him as a hostage. However, Captain Kamachi tells him he has no worth as a hostage. They found out that Captain Kamachi companions had already escaped, but they didn't know who was inside the ship. Captain Kamachi revealed that Michelle and Akari are the only ones piloting Unit 1 and Unit 2. They're not coming back, no matter how much they broadcast Kamachi's screams. Suddenly, they blast him with the anti-terraformer cannon, leaving the captain laying on the ground. But they realized that the only targets for the cannon should be the ones moving because of its motion sensor. Suddenly, there was a gust of wind that caught their attention, and they also found out that it was just an illusion that they were seeing. The gas belongs to the Russian Ivan. Using the advantage of this, they save Captain Kamachi with the help of a companion with the power of a mountain mole, Sergei, ranking number 11. Division 3 sacrificed their vehicle to destroy the enemy's laser shield to gain entry. Now, the Russians are turning their backs on the Chinese because of how the Chinese have betrayed everyone. Asimov's shell is so strong that it has the power of Tasmanian giant crab, so he can't be hit by a bullet. He declares that the Russian Federation Space Army is proud allies of us Japanese forces. Meanwhile, Michelle and Akari are planning to meet and ask Joseph, the captain of Division 6, for help, who is busy killing the terraformers. Back to Annex 1, the two captains face each other, and Asimov noticed that Liu San lied about his power, which he said was an anaconda, but it was actually a blue-ringed octopus. Asimov is angry at Liu San for teaching the terraformers so much about humanity. Using the machine they have, bullets rained down on Asimov, but due to his strength and endurance, he was still able to advance towards the machine and throw it. The Chinese division was surprised and amazed by Captain Asimov's strength. Meanwhile, Alexander sneaks into the Annex ship. Down on Earth, Himura revealed that his country has secured Professor Honda. In the process, he reveals that Honda was the one who created Akari. This information shocked everyone because they knew Honda was killed 20 years ago. Back on Mars, Asimov and Liusen have one-on-one -on -one combat, and in the middle of their exchange of attacks, Asimov's gas mask is removed. Even the crews on both sides are already fighting, and Liu San thought he would just wait for the poison to get into Asimov's body because he no longer has a gas mask on. 
Liu San doesn't expect Asimov to fight well, putting himself in danger, so he spits black ink on Asimov's face, but he was saved by the bubbles. Asimov tried to slam on the ground, but he couldn't do it because his body slipped, and the Russian captain was hit. At the same time, his crew was at a disadvantage until they received a heavy blow. Captain Liu San told them the only reason they didn't surrender was because they could win without their alliance. Despite his damage, Captain Asimov stands still and tells them it was they who betrayed humanity, not them. Captain Asimov started to attack again, but Liu San was able to dodge, and he wrapped his hands around him and released a strong poison gas. However, Asimov suddenly cuts off both of their limbs and slams him into the ground to try to cut the torso in half. Asimov's two crew members have also recovered to protect their captain. Suddenly, Alexander arrived on board a missile launcher that he found hidden inside the spaceship. He makes a threat to use the missiles to shoot down the communication jamming tower. If that happens, every division will have the ability to communicate with Earth and inform them of the Chinese's betrayal. A crew member named Chun-Li from the Chinese division suddenly approached him, and she started stripping. Then he suddenly appeared behind Alexander and almost killed him. Then suddenly, a strange light came and hit them. Everyone wondered where it came from, and then they noticed that the sky had darkened. Upon closer inspection, they turned out to be countless terraformers. Aaron heard that the terraformers were laughing at them for killing each other, even though they are the same species. The terraformers' leaders also showed up and looked like Dragonfly. Jet tried to take down the Dragonfly terraformer, but it moved too fast and dodged all his attacks. Then Dragonfly terraformer moves toward Nina, but Aaron blocks it. In the process, only he is taken. The Russians and the Chinese work together to fight it, but it is too fast. It gathers all the bodies of the dead humans and sends them to the others for experimentation. Then they dropped the young cockroaches that were holding the knife. Inside the spaceship, a very innocent girl named Hong was surprised to see the terraformers inside. Captain Liu San and Captain Asimov were surrounded by Kid's terraformer and realized the dragonfly terraformer was training them how to fight, and they started dominating the humans. Meanwhile, Nina, who had already been knocked out by them, just then, Kanako appeared and cut the terraformers who were holding Nina. Ivan also comes with her. Even though this is not the plan, his mission is to keep the wounded safe. The little terraformers saw him, but he immediately put them to sleep using his power. The Russian division killed the enemy one by one and went inside the annex ship. Meanwhile, despite Kanako's great speed, the dragonfly terraformer are still able to keep up with him. The other terraformer also followed him, so he took out his blade and cut everything in his path. Kanako manages to escape and wonders why he isn't chased by the terraformers anymore. All of a sudden, it returned to the annex ship, where the cockroaches are now gathering. The girl earlier, Hong, appeared on top of the annex ship, and the terraformers started dropping. Meanwhile, Asimov saw the Chinese wear full body armor. He realized Hong's power was a bacteria, so they needed to get away from here immediately. They started running, but Alexander was still standing and looked like he was planning something. The Chinese division sent a rocket missile to Asinov, but with the help of Anastasia, she blocked it. And they managed to escape under the ground of Sergei, a mountain mole. Alexander chose to be left behind to finish off Hong for the sake of his wife, who has an alien engine virus, because he wanted his companions to succeed in making a vaccine. Liu San puts on a suit and mask so that they won't die from Hong's bacteria, and they didn't realize that one of them was a trap that exploded, but they found out that Alexander, who did this, was the only one who was ready to die just to defeat them. Let's look back at when Alexander had hair. He fell in love with a girl named Gina. Despite being rejected so many times, Alexander kept pushing her. She says that her father would not allow it. So Alexander asks to meet her father, and her father is the scary General Asimov. In their first meeting ever with Asimov, he punches him out of the house. Every time he came home, he was always punched in the face, and Gina always cut his hair down to look respectable until he became bald. Gina gets angry, so she and her mother beat up Asimov and demand that he give Alexander a chance. Soon after, Alexander and Gina get married. Gina gets pregnant, but one day she gets infected with the alien virus. This is the reason why Asimov and him took the risk of going to Mars to make vaccines. Back to the present, Alexander killed each bodyguard one by one until he finally cornered Hong in an empty room. He hesitates because it's only a child, 
but he loves his wife too much and will do anything to save them. Then suddenly, the Chinese came to save her, blocking his blade. Burke took off his mask only to find Alexander, even if it cost him inhaling the bacteria. Chun-Li used her invincible power to beat up Alexander until she threw him against the wall. But Alexander was willing to save his wife and create a vaccine. He injects four doses of the drugs and grabs Chun-Li by the neck, but Hong grabs him and begs him not to kill Chun-Li. Jet revealed that Alexander was already dead. Captain Liu Sen takes time to appreciate Alexander's resolve and warrior spirit. The battle that cannot be given begins between those who abandoned their lives after returning to Earth and those who want to protect them even if they are dead. Later on, Liu Sen contacts Akari and Michelle to force them to surrender, or else they will be hit by a missile. Akari is pissed off about this, but Michelle is just relaxed because they have more important things to do. In the middle of the journey, their ship suddenly stops, and they discover it is a hybrid terraformer lifted with only one hand. And at a glance, Michelle realized that the hybrid terraformers have the same powers as her father, just like a Paraponra ant that has a lot of power. Elsewhere, on the escape vessel of Division 3, Captain Kamachi wakes up, and Captain Asimov asks for forgiveness for the ridiculous moves he made, but Captain Kamachi still thanked him for saving his life. Asimov is still angry because of Alexander's suicide mission, so no matter what happens, he has to succeed in developing a vaccine against the alien engine virus. Then, Asimov quickly goes over everything that happened and the specifics of the capabilities of the Chinese division with him, especially with the humanoid bioweapon. Kamachi said that they need to find Akari and Michelle before Division 4, and aside from Division 4, the terraformers also wanted to kidnap the two. Meanwhile, Akari used his cables for the hybrid cockroach, but he was still able to move it using his overwhelming strength. Michelle pushed their vehicle, and Akari pushed the other, so the two cars spun around while the cables were wrapped around the hybrid cockroach's body. Michelle responded by punching the hybrid cockroach's body hard and repeatedly, and Akari felt Michelle's strong punches in his cables. Michelle rushed to finish the terraformer, but the terraformer knocked her away with a flick on Michelle's forehead, and she disappeared far away. Akari saw that the body of the terraformer was already cracked by Michelle's punches, but it was moving again, so Akari covered it with cables. Akari was surprised when his cables melted, and it was because of another hybrid terraformer behind him. Now he is in danger between the two, and suddenly Michelle appears furious. She quickly tries to use her explosive gas on it, but the hybrid terraformer sucks in the explosive gas. The two terraformers talk, and then he throws his partner to separate Akari and Michelle, who are no match for their abilities. The acid terraformer starts using a strange martial arts technique to attack him. Akari, being a karate specialist, manages to fight back, breaking the terraformer's arm. Shockingly, the terraformer pulled out his gun and fired at him, willing to do what it takes to win. With lots of bullets in his body, Akari collapses. When Yeko saw that Akari was already defeated, he asked for help from the Chinese division, because when Akari and Michelle died, she would be the next to be killed by the terraformers. Liu San doesn't want the terraformers to get their bodies, so they send a missile to the exact location where Akari and Michelle are, but Liu San doesn't know that it is also included in their plan. Alex is waiting for the missile because he will destroy it, and its smoke will serve as a signal for Captain Joseph. When Akari felt the missile, he grabbed it with a cable, and Alex didn't hit it. So the missile went straight to their ship, but it didn't explode there, and you can see that the bullets didn't hit Akari's body. They were about to launch the second missile, but Liu San wonders why the first missile didn't explode. It was discovered that Alexander removed the powder from the missiles and put something else. It was a special weapon that Alexander sacrificed himself to give it to Akari. The anti-terraformer Vibro Ninja Blade is known as Hizamaru. It's now a proper showdown between him and the Acid Terraformer. Acid Terraformer starts using his own club to throw powerful streams of rocks at him. When the Acid Terraformer saw that Akari was getting weaker, he thought this was his chance to kill him. But Akari suddenly moved so fast that he split the Acid Terraformer, and Akari was also getting weaker, but he still wanted to help Michelle. Meanwhile, Michelle is getting beat up by the hybrid terraformer. She also has a flashback. Her school once collapsed when she was a little child. She was the only one who survived unharmed, while her friends sustained horrific injuries. Michelle hated her father for going missing, 
but she discovered her father was a hero after looking through the data Kamachi provided her. Her powers are a memory of her father. Using her father's memories as motivation, Michelle woke up. She was very angry at the hybrid terraformer, so she used the accelerator on her arm to hit the face of the terraformer very hard. Michelle also used her accelerator on her back and feet because she wanted to make the hybrid terraformer cry. Unfortunately, the terraformer hybrid used the broken leg to kick Michelle in the stomach, causing her to fall, but she still tried to stand up. The terraformer hybrid wants to finish her, but Alex arrives just in time to break the weapon. Then Michelle punched the cockroach, but her bones also started getting cracked while she was trying to put down the terraformer. Michelle even pinched its head, and using the accelerator, she put the terraformer's face on the ground. But the terraformer is still standing, and Michelle has already accepted that she will be dying. Suddenly, Akari's cables and swords arrive to save her. Akari can no longer stand, but using his cables, he is able to move until the hybrid terraformer finally dies. While lying down, Akari remembers that Michelle's birthday is today. But Michelle reminds him that they need to find Division 6's leader, Joseph. While they can still move, they wonder why Alex and Yiko are not here yet, and they are surprised to see the Chinese division arrive to take them. Earlier, Jilin shot Alex in the leg before going to capture Akari and Michelle. Then Jilin uses his net to capture the two of them, and he starts taking them back to the Annex ship. They also plan to get the 200 terraformer samples that were captured by the US Japanese division. Jilin also wants to know where the other crew members of Divisions 1 and 2 are, but Akari lies that they are all dead, Jilin doesn't believe it and shoots his ear. Jilin reports to Captain Liu Sen that he has captured Akari and Michelle, along with two crew members. Meanwhile, Akari's teammates are digging underground towards the Annex ship. They know their location because of Jared's echolocation, while Peggy was digging to the Annex. According to Wolf, who has powers like a hammerhead shark, they can't go to the top of the ground because there is still bacteria left. So they wait until dawn to destroy the signal jamming tower and tell everyone on Earth that the Chinese have betrayed them. Meanwhile, Jilin is on his way to their base when suddenly a giant net stops them. So Jilin puts it on autopilot and goes out to protect the ship from a horde of terraformers coming their way. All he has is that one blade, and he fights without using any mutant powers. Since there are thousands of terraformers coming at them, Jilin throws Alex and Yako away as a distraction. Alex saved Yako from falling, and he also ran out of medicine to activate his power. Alex made him run away, but Yaiko chose to protect him. She uses the medicine and reveals her own mutation, the striped skunk. After she released the stinky smell, the terraformers stopped moving. While she was carrying Alex to escape, Yako was suddenly shot at her legs by a hybrid terraformer with the power to shoot highly compressed water. The terraformer also shoots Jilan's arm and wonders where they got the ability. Meanwhile, Yako falls down in pain. Now that Yako is injured and cannot move, the terraformers step forward and kick Alex until he bleeds. A terraformer is about to strike the two of them. However, the terraformer drops dead. Coming to their rescue is the number one ranked warrior Joseph, the leader of the 6th division. He tells them that they will be okay because the number one ranking is here. Before anything else, Joseph gave the medicine to Alex and Yako to speed up their recovery. When the terraformers sensed that Joseph was strong, they rushed towards him, but Joseph was confident in his ability and immediately sliced them one by one. Even if the number one warrior was alone, he was not afraid of the many terraformers. After slicing some terraformers, three of them ride the vehicle to catch up to Akari and Michelle. Joseph was featured on TV with the nickname Speedy Joe, a popular 17-year-old high school senior who earned a gold medal. It was a competition known as the King of the Athletes. His powers and base surgery are unknown, but he is powerful enough to take on enough terraformers to make a mountain-sized pile out of their bodies without transforming. His strength, speed, and endurance are the result of 600 years of selective breeding on humans conducted by the Newton clan. They quickly catch up with Jilan's ship while he slices the terraformers along the way. Joseph was able to make his vehicle land inside the ship, coming face to face with Jilan. Even though Jilan is facing the number one warrior on the planet Mars, he will still finish the mission. Joseph and Jilan go all out against each other while also fighting the terraformers, which are attacking them at the same time. Joseph suddenly dropped his sword and stepped back which Jilan took. 
Michelle was surprised by what Joseph did. Then Julin was suddenly shot by a hybrid terraformer with highly compressed water. Joseph explains that the terraformer have a priority list for their targets, and one of those targets is holding a weapon. Julin needed to take medicine, so he planned to kick Michelle out to distract his enemies, but Joseph got furious with him because he has a crush on Michelle. The number one fighter finished him off, breaking his leg and then throwing him overboard. Jilin is immediately killed by a horde of terraformers. The hybrid terraformer continue attacking from a distance. Michelle asks what happened to his crew, and Joseph responds that the water bullet power belonged to one of his members. He revealed that before they could get out of their ship, they were surrounded by terraformers, so he used swarming pheromones to get the huge army of them to come after him. He thought he had gotten all the terraformers in the area, meaning that his crew members are all probably dead. While Joseph drives the ship, and Yako gives the drug to Michelle and Akari. Joseph was confident that they would succeed in the mission because when they returned to Earth, he wanted to marry Michelle, who was surprised by this. Michelle wishes she could tell him to shut up, but she can't do that since Joseph literally just saved her and her teammates' lives. So she agrees to have lunch with him once they get back on Earth. Meanwhile, Wolf felt the departure of Leeson's men, who were on their way to start the mission, when suddenly Jilin came to the place where they were hiding. Jilin promptly shoots the members. So, Keiji and Marcos take their drugs and quickly engage him in battle. Marcos acted quickly and defeated him, cracking his neck. But behind him is another Jilin, who is holding Peggy hostage. Then Peggy released a spike from behind, and all of them ran to get inside the spaceship while Marcos was facing Jilin alone. Unfortunately, Peggy was caught by the dragonfly terraformer and was thrown into many terraformers. While they were running, they felt a strong wind because it turned out to be many cockroaches driving away the remaining bacteria in the area. The Annex ship releases a large net to capture all the terraformer around it. Meanwhile, the rest of them enter the Annex ship. There, they find out that there's a biological weapon active right now, and their bodies will only last for 15 minutes inside. The Dragonfly Terraformer also entered the ship, and Keiji faced it alone because he ordered them to close the doors so that no one would be caught in their fight. Keiji holds it back with his boxing skills, and the Dragonfly Terraformer is too fast, and Keiji loses one arm. The Dragonfly Terraformer was getting dizzy because he had been hit in the jaw. Keiji took the opportunity to punch him in the face and beat the Dragonfly. Outside the Annex ship, Marcos comes face to face with Jilan and two more of them. Jilin reveals that he has the power of a sea squirt, which can clone itself. Marcos is also informed by Jilin that a Chinese battleship is coming towards Mars. They will execute everybody who is not a Chinese ally as soon as it gets here, so he asks Marcos to join his side, and his friends will be saved too. So Marcos lays down his weapon and relaxes on the ground. When Jilin starts talking cheerfully like he is assuring his safety, Marcos drives his staff right through his smug face. When two Jilan shoot at him, Marcos stops all the bullets and kills them. Inside the Annex ship, KG gets separated from the rest of the team because the door now cannot be opened. He decides to go alone to the control room, while the rest will get the protective suit for bacteria. Before he went, he regenerated his arm and left. As his teammates searched for the protective armor, they were surprised to find that the other terraformers were also inside and wearing protective suits and they even destroyed the remaining suits and masks so they could no longer be used. They also found many clones of Jilin, which they destroyed. The engineers ran, and the terraformers followed them. But instead of attacking them, they immediately went for Jilin and Hong. Jilin immediately responded to the punch and ordered Hong to hide inside. But the terraformer uses the fire extinguisher to keep the door from closing. So, Jilin holds them back, despite being 2v1. He tried to protect her, but one of the terraformer turned out to be a hybrid. He was shot in the back, but Hong helped him by cutting whatever that thing was. Because of the hole in Jilan's suit, Hong doesn't want to use his power because Jilan will also die. Then Jilan couldn't move because of the effects of the poison. The terraformers are about to kill Hong and Jilan, but Keiji stops one of them while Chun-Li stops the other one. 
Despite Chun-Li's invisibility, Keiji can still see him, so he ordered the woman to put on her clothes. Because Keiji is their enemy, Chun-Li didn't let it pass and immediately punched it hard. Keiji, being a gentleman, doesn't want to hit a woman, even if she hits him. So when Chun-Li beats him up, he does not hit back. He gets hurt terribly, but Keiji keeps coming back. While Keiji is holding them, the rest of his team members reach the control room using Erika's powers, just like a gecko, with six minutes left for the bacteria to start working on them. Meanwhile, Liu San and three Jilin clones are still looking for Michelle and Akari. On the other hand, Joseph decides to find Liu San because he knows that Liu San will start firing long-range missiles at Michelle and Akari if Liu San fails to capture them. Captain Kamachi is also fighting the terraformers, and they realized all the terraformers were coming from the direction of Annex, who is escaping from the bacteria. Inside the Annex, Wolf remains motivated even with only six minutes left before their bodies are completely destroyed by the bacteria. Even if they are non-combatant, engineering skills are high. They are about to hack the spaceship system, but there is also a terraformer inside the control room that punches the screen. Hearing this outside, Chun-Li realizes that the engineers are already inside. Keiji immediately went in to save the fellow engineers. Chun-Li tries to stop their hacking, so Keiji holds her down. The terraformer suddenly tries to kill Hong, but unexpectedly, Keiji saves his life anyway. There are only three minutes left for the engineers, but because of what happened, they need to start hacking again, or they won't make it. Keiji had to make a decision, so he decided to break the floor to save his friends. They all survive the fall using one of the members' webs, and because of this, they can't do the mission. But the terraformer is still alive, and Chun-Li and Keiji were forced to help each other to kill the terraformer, but it seems to have had no effect. The terraformer has the power of a radial, which is capable of absorbing and distributing any impact. Despite Keiji and Chun-Li's combined efforts, the radial terraformer proves to be too strong for them to defeat. So Keiji punches with full power while Chun-Li guides it with her precision. They kill the radial, but the force knocks them both out as well. The 15 minutes were over, and Wolf regrets not being able to hack the tower, and now the bacteria will start taking effect. It's a good thing that Amelia was left in the control room, and despite the poison that is slowly killing her, Amelia is still not giving up. Meanwhile, on Earth, Herma is still waiting to contact them and believes they will survive on Mars. While Amelia is doing her best to hack into the system, Akari and Michelle are fending off a lot of terraformers again. Amelia was able to survive for a long time due to her surgical powers as a narwhal, as she was able to shut down some of her organs that she was not using except her fingers, brain, and eyes, which were needed for the mission. While working on the system, she thinks about how much she loves Keiji and how she's afraid of dying. Finally, Amelia was able to contact the Earth, but she was so weak that he couldn't say what she had to say. The only thing that came out of his mouth was to save us. All the world leaders quickly worked towards sending a rescue ship to Mars. While in the middle of the battle, they heard Akari say that their communication device is now connected to Earth, and Liu San was nervous to find out about it. Unexpectedly, some terraformers show up at the door, ready to kill Amelia. She is about to be killed, but Jared and Marcos, two other members of her squad, are there to save her. They had to move quickly because many terraformers were approaching. Back on Earth, UNASA finds out that there are three ships going toward Mars. One is that Chinese battleship, and there are two others as well. They managed to rescue Jared and the others, and they were given Hong's antidote, so the engineers were saved from the poison while their spaceship was completely taken over by the terraformers. Amelia blames herself for not being able to say what was supposed to be said on the radio, but Captain Kamachi reveals that the officer's radio came back online, and they were able to hear everything. This is when Akari and Michelle contacted the German government and told them everything about the Chinese betrayal. Captain Kamachi thanks her and her teammates for sacrificing so much to get those precious 10 seconds. Despite losing so many people, Kamachi says that their mission has been successful. Now they have to wait for their rescue ships. They also found out that Hong doesn't know much about Liu San's plans, so they're waiting for Chun-Li to wake up so they can contact Liu San and report that the executives on Earth have found out about their evil plans. Despite this, Liu San is still in pursuit of his goal, so he plans to send a missile to Akari when Joseph suddenly arrives. Akari and Michelle, along with Yeko and Alex, continue their journey to North, as commanded by Captain Kamachi. 
Captain Kamachi also brings his entire combined division to the north. He says that they'll be going to the sea. While on Earth, the terraformers have also arrived, and they pretend that they are talking to people. Elsewhere, two other terraformers can be seen living a normal life in an apartment. Elsewhere, on Mars, one of the mutant terraformers obtains the electricity power that Adolf used to have, while a group of politician terraformers look over him. And this is where the whole season 2 ends. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.